Hey, hey, seventh grade. So our learning target today is I can calculate mean, median, mode, range, and any, any kind of word problem related to those terms. So we're going to be filling out the boxes that are on pages 12 and 13 in your packet. Um, so go ahead and flip to those pages 12 and 13, mean, median, mode, range. So you should be in box number one. So it looks like this, actually. We're going to be in box one on page 12. My screen's going to look a little different than yours because you're going to be needing the information on my screen to um, figure out what to put in your box. Okay, so here we go. What is the maximum value in the data set? So if we look at the DAX data set, set, we're looking for the maximum value or the greatest value. So go ahead and look at those numbers, looking for the greatest value. Okay, so the greatest value in that data set should be 31. So your answer should be D. So go ahead and write a D in there. You don't have a lot of work to show for that problem. For some of these, you won't have a ton of work to show, but just go ahead and write D. Moving on to box number two. For box number two, what's the range? So thinking about the words mean, median, mode, range, remember range is the biggest minus the smallest, the range of data. So our biggest number in that data set, if we look at the range here, the biggest number in that data set would be, appears to be eight, I think is the smallest, or I'm sorry, the smallest. The biggest number in that data set appears to be 31. So our range would be 31 subtract eight. So you should have 31 subtract eight. So our range should be B, 23. B, our range is B. Okay, so we're going to be talking about all those words, mean, median, mode, range, maximum, minimum, things like that. In box number three, there's that next word, the median. The median is the um, number in the middle. The problem that we have right now for this is that for our median, we're really going to need to put these in order from least to greatest, least to greatest. So I'm actually going to organize this into a stem and leaf plot just because we just practiced that. So I'd like you to do that as well. Let's go ahead and create a stem and leaf plot for this data. So if we look at the stem and leaf plot, our smallest number is 8, we know, and our biggest number is 31. So my stems then would be, I'm actually going to move this over a little bit on my screen so I have some room to create this plot. It doesn't have to be fancy, but we're going to go ahead and say 0 because those are my numbers 0 through 9, 1s, 20s, 30s. So let's just get a little practice on that stem and leaf plot, okay? So if we talk about our numbers 0 through 9, we're really talking about 8 and 9. Those are the only ones in that range 0 through 9. So we're going to go ahead and put those in order from least to greatest. So we have 8 and we'd have 9. So we don't really know what this information is. It could be test scores, it could be quiz scores, it could be free throws, it could be lots of things because we don't really have the data there that's, or the title there that explains it. So let's go to our 10s now, 10, 11, 12, all the way to 19. So we'd have 13, 16, uh, 10. 15, 13, 19, all of those are in that range. So we're going to go ahead and put them in order from least to greatest. So the smallest one would be 10. And then it looks like we have two 13s. And then we have a 15. We have a 16. And we have a 19. So those are data, 13s. So we have many data points there. And then we have 20s. We have 20, and we have 22. So we have 20, and we have 22. All right, and then finally we have 30s, 31. All right, so the median or the middle number in the data set, we have, we have these data points of, if we go from least to greatest, least to greatest, looking for the middle. So we're going to say least, greatest, least, greatest. Everybody's following along here. Least, greatest, least, greatest, least, greatest. Looks like our middle number in that data set would be 15. 15. This is the one that's kind of left there. 15 is the median using the stem and leaf plot. I might need that stem and leaf plot um, on the next page, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it there. The mode is the number that occurs the most often. Using the stem and leaf plot would probably be the easiest thing on the previous screen, but I'm going to go ahead and look for the mode or the number that occurs the most often. Looks like the mode of 13 could be it. Let's see, is there any other numbers that occur more than once? Nope, it looks like the mode is 13. So we've covered um, median, mode, and range, and maximum so far in our terms. All right, let's go to the next screen and see what the next screen says. There it is, there's that other word, the mean. Remember for the mean, what we do is we add all the data points. Go ahead and grab that calculator. If you don't have one, grab one now because you're gonna need it. Add all the data points, add them all up. So we have 8 plus 13 plus 16 plus 22 and so on. Go ahead and add them up and get a total. And then we're going to divide. So I'm doing it at the same time you are. 
Okay, everybody's adding those up. Keep adding. I'm gonna get 176 as my total. Go ahead and make sure that you're also getting 176 as your total there when you add those up, 176. I'll go ahead and stop for a second, make sure you're caught up. All right, and then we're gonna divide by how many we have. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That looks like 11 data points. So 176 divided by 11 gives me 16. So your answer for the mean should be 16. Everybody should have 16. Now, if we're going too fast here, uh, make sure you pause that video and go back. Okay? All right, moving on to the next screen then. Next screen is asking about us the median attendance for the Vikings game. Looks like we have five games. So in order to find the median attendance, we'd have to put those in order for uh, least to greatest. So we're going to go ahead and say the least number here would be... Which game? It looks like game three. So three, two, seven, I'm sorry, 32,720 would be our smallest number, what we call our minimum. All right, so we're moving on to game two then. Game two then, I'm sorry, the next game for attendance that looks like is game five. 33,964, we're going from least to greatest. And then next attendance game looks like 34,940. And then we have, let's see, game two is next, 35,000 people, 620. And then finally, 35,656. So from order from least to greatest, we'd say least, greatest, least, greatest. So our median would be 34,940, least to greatest. Go ahead and take a look at that. Make sure you understand what's going on there. Median, they have to be in order from least to greatest. We're looking for the middle value. Okay, guys, meet me on the next problem, number seven. Now, what is the mean attendance for the Vikings game? Remember what we have to do here. We have to add them all up. So add all of those up. Go ahead and do that. Grab your calculator. Get a total. And then we divide by five. I'm going to go ahead and let give you some time to work. Everybody's adding, and we're going to divide by five to calculate what's called the mean or the average. Go. Adding those up. Okay, so when you add those up, you should have 172900, zero, zero, which is really a total of attendance in five games, 172,900. And to find the average, we would divide by the five games to get the average attendance. When we do that, your average attendance should be 34,580. 34,580. Okay, guys, meet me on the next page. <clears throat> or the next box, I meant to say. Box number eight, here we go. What is the minimum? We already talked about the maximum. The maximum is the highest number. The minimum is the lowest number in tenants. Looks like the lowest number of tenants was in game three. That was the smallest attendance, 32,720. Was our smallest attendance for that five game span. Okay. All right, moving on to the next page then. Page number nine, what is the minimum of the data set here? So looking for the smallest of the data set, it looks like the smallest bar happens to be in February. When we followed up and followed over, it looks like it's four. So the minimum would be B4. The smallest attendance there is four. All right, so minimum is the smallest. Okay, so now what's the maximum? Maximum is the highest. So it looks like December, and that looks like it's coming in at 11. Coming in at 11. So our maximum, our highest would be at 11. Okay, moving on to the next one. What is the median of the data set? Well, this one's a little bit trickier because we're going to have to, first of all, find all the data points. We're going to have to put them in order from least to greatest, and then we're going to have to find the middle. So we have some work cut out for us here. So if I follow the bars up, this is looking like 11. I know you don't have this in front of you, so you're going to have to kind of bear with me. And then we have an 8. I'll figure this out for us. We have a 4. We have a 6. We have an 8. And we have what's called a 7. Okay, so these are our numbers we have to put in order from least to greatest now. So the smallest number is four. And then we have six. Help me out here. So least to greatest, we have four, six. Everybody should be writing. Should be writing these down. Least to greatest. And then we have a seven. 
least to greatest, looking for the median or the middle number here. Then we have an 8. We have another 8. And finally, we have 11. That's our order from least to greatest, looking for the middle number known as the median. Now that we have them, we go least, greatest, least, greatest. We're going to go least, greatest, least, greatest, looking for the middle number between 7 and 8. Now, we talked about this before. What's halfway between $7 and $8? Some kids will say, well, that's just $7.50. Some kids can't handle that. That's hard for them to understand. So you can just add these two numbers that you're stuck between and divide by two. When you do that, you get 7.5 or $7.50. Answer should be D. Answer to number 11 should be D. 7.5 is the median. Okay, let's move on. Talking about same language here. Next prop box. What is the mean of the data set? So we're going back to those same data points from the previous screen. I think I'm actually going to grab this if I can and copy it. I don't know if it's going to let me. I'm going to go ahead and try to copy this. I'm going to cut it so then we can use it right here. Although I don't know if I'm going to be able to paste that in. Let's see if it'll take it. There it is. Good. Okay. So when we want the mean then, same numbers from the end of those, we're going to add these all up, get a total, and then we're going to divide by the number of scores, which is six. Go ahead and add those. Four plus six plus seven plus eight. 8 plus 8 plus 11. Go ahead and add those up, guys. This is number 12. Looking for the mean, the average. Add them up and divide by how many there are. 4 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 8 plus 11. Gives us a total of 44. So we have 44. We divide by 6. When we take 44 and we divide by 6, we get 7.3. So the average or the mean should be 7.3. All right, so moving on to the next problem, number 13. What is the range? The range is the big minus the small, the range of the data. So the range of the data, it looks like it ranges from 20 down to 11. 20 to 11. So 20 is the biggest minus, uh, minus 11, the smallest, gives us a range of 9. So our range should be A, 9. Go ahead and write that down. Hang in there, guys. A couple more boxes left. I know that's kind of getting to be a long video here. Okay, we're about 12-minute mark. Keep going though. Here we go. What is the mode? Mode is the number that occurs the most often. So which one occurs the most often really is what is saying what is one has the most number of X's. So if we look at the longest graph, we'd say that 18 is the mode. It has the most number of data points there. We're talking about scores on math quiz. It looks like we have four students that scored an 18 on that max, max, math quiz because each one of those X represents a student. So we have four students. All right, moving on to number 15. What is the median? Least, greatest, least, greatest. Looking for the middle number here. So each one of these represents the students. We had one student score 11. We had three students scored 20. So we're going to go least, greatest, 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 least, greatest. It looks like our median then is what's left, which is an 18. Our median is our middle number is a score of 18. Just going least, greatest, least, greatest, least, greatest. Now, I know you don't have it on the screen, so you're going to kind of have to count it maybe with your finger or something because you don't have this printed in your paper. So I know you have to kind of do your best. Okay, moving on here, guys. True or false? There is at least one outlier in this data set. Outlier is the same term as like an outcast. Is there something that just doesn't fit in? It's kind of the idea of which one of these things just doesn't belong. You should say totally right here. Number 11, true is an outlier. Right there is our outlier. So we'd say true for sure. Okay, number 17 is just a review question. We're asking if these figures are similar. We're asking basically are they proportionate. So we're going to say big versus small looking for the x value. So big versus small. So we have our big, we have our small, just a review question. Um, in our big, well, starting in our small, we have three to choose from. We only need two. Of course, we need the x. So I'm going to grab the x from the small because I'm trying to find that. And then I need one of these other numbers. I'm going to take five. x and five, and then we're going to match them up. What's going with x? So what is matching up with x? What's in the X spot? 32 is in the X spot. And what's in the five spots? We're going to go ahead and say, all right, what's in this five spot? 20 is. So we're going to go ahead and put 20 in that spot, taking cross products and solving. So we're going to say we have 20X equals 32 times 5. So 32 times 5, I'm going to go ahead and calculate that. I don't have a calculator right in front of me right now. That gives me 160. So we're going to divide by 20, copy and paste. So we get x equals 8. So the unknown value is x equals 8. That's the idea of big minus small. Kind of some review stuff from earlier in the year. 
Okay, so let's move on to the next box then. Okay, next box. What is the absolute value of 18? Remember, absolute value really means jail bars or the distance from zero. So we get it out of jail, it's positive 18. We do not change signs there. It's always positive when we pull out of it. It really means how far from zero. All right, next problem here. Number 19, great question. I want you to work through this one into its entirety. You will need your calculator. You will need to type in 3.14. What is the circumference of a circle that has a diameter of 14? When I need a circumference, I'll just use pi d. There's our formula we've been working through all year. We're trying to find the circumference. So we know that 3.14 is pi. And we need the diameter. Diameter is a line that goes from side to side passing through the center is 14. What I'm really looking to find is how much crust that do I need on this pizza, the crust or the distance around the pizza. So 3.14 multiplied by the diameter of 14, 3.14 times 14. So 3.14 to multiply by 14 is what we have here. gives us 43.96 inches of crust or circumference. So you should be saying B. It's just 3.14 times the diameter. 3.14 times 14 is all we have going on there. Okay, next problem. What is the area of a circle that has a radius of 24? So we have pi r squared. Sounds like area to me. Okay, so there's our formula. Everybody should know that formula. Go ahead and write that down. When I need it, or sorry, pi r squared sounds like area to me. All right, so we're looking for the area. So there's our variable that's unknown. We know that 3.14 is pi, and we know that our radius in this problem is 24, but we have to square it. So it's just a calculator sequence, 3.14 times 24 squared. So we're going to go ahead and type that in, 3.14 times 24 squared. Everybody's typing that in. When we solve that, 3.14 times 24 squared, we get 1808.64 inches squared. That's the area or the total amount of sauce on that pizza all the yummy stuff on that pizza should be b and the last problem for today here we go guys last problem for today is which expression we can use to find area of circle area of a circle pi r squared sounds like area to me you should be saying d that's how we find the area of a circle that should be a pretty easy one for you after everything we've been doing in this uh work you only have two problems for homework tonight you need to finish the two problems that you see on page 14 um, numbers 22 and number 23 that is due tomorrow have a fabulous night seventh grade